We talked about a couple of really important moments in your very young career where they were like quantum leaps. And I think for this week's segment of the rear view presented by BF Goodrich, we're going to watch you take on Gabriel Medina and Griffin Colapinto in round four of the 2008 Corona Open J-Bay. As always, the rear view is sponsored by BF Goodrich Tires. BF Goodrich is celebrating 150 years in 2020. If you want to wish BF Goodrich a happy 150th anniversary, you can tag at BF Goodrich Tires and use the hashtag BFG and WSL. Tag us and let you know what rear view segments you want to see in the future, and they just might make it onto the show. Happy 150th to BF Goodrich, and thanks for supporting these conversations. All right, here we go. All right, so the scene set here, this is the 2018 Corona Open J-Bay, event number 7 of 11 on the 2018 Championship Tour. Uh, you were in round four here against soon-to-be two-time World WSL champion Gabriel Medina and then rookie Griffin Colapinto. Third place in this round is eliminated, and so far this season you got a ninth on the Gold Coast, a 25th at Bells Beach, a ninth at Rio, a 25th in Bali, a 25th in Margaret River, and this was a real breakout event for you, and, uh, and Gabriel goes up first. Man, you, honestly, you couldn't have picked a better event to put up right here. Like, this <laughs> event, th I'm not, sorry, not this event, this heat kind of changed my life, honestly. Um, I have so it. much we to talk it. about I knew, I knew there was something special about this one. You nailed it. This was the, the heat. Like, just, yeah, just the, the way you, um, you, you were explaining my results um, for the first half of the year. I remember um, I put this goal of being in the top 10 this year. That was like my ultimate goal. And I just put so much into it, like that goal of being in the top 10, being in the top 10. And I started the year so bad. I started just like doubting my, just like looking at myself in the mirror going, what are you thinking about? Top 10? Like, yeah, you'll be lucky to even qualify. You know, <laughs> like I remember thinking that like, yeah, you better step it up. And yeah, this is kind of where, you know, I got... I just got like pissed off, I think. I was like, you know, I'm sick of just being that kid and looking up to everyone on tour in a way. You know, I was like, you know, if you want to be fighting against these guys, you have to look at them eye to eye on the same level. You can't look up to them and compete. And um, wow, this was a huge moment. Um, you know, I was, I was working with Snake. At, there's, so many, there's so many things going on. Um, tell I'm tell with, us everything. I want to tell you everything. Um, I was, you know, this is... This is funny, um, you know, I haven't really told anyone this, but I mean, I haven't really told anyone this publicly, but people just know. Um, this event, you know, I was writing for Al America at the time, mm -hmm. and this event, um, for the first time of my, uh, pretty much my career of a surfer, I wrote a different board. I wrote a sharp eye. And uh, I got this board like three years before, two years before, and it was just sitting in my garage. And for some reason, I just took it out one day when I was at Huntington before I went to J-Bay, took the dust off. I was like, yeah, I want to try something different. Um, I broke a bunch of my boards. It was like a good swell in, at home before. And I broke a bunch of my boards. And I was like, oh, yeah, look at this board. I was cleaning out my garage with my dad. And uh, I was like, I might just give it a try. It felt good, whatever. I mean, it felt really good. So I put it in my, I put it in my board bag. And here I am in J-Bay. I went to Bolito, the QS, the week before. And uh, I ended up breaking uh, like three of my boards. And I was like, oh my God, I'm running out of surfboards. And here's this like sharp eye that is so prohibited to ride, you know, in my, in my own little world at the, at the time. But I was like, I'm just going to give it a go. You know, like I have nothing to lose at, the, at, at this point. I'm pretty much falling off tour. I like really need to change something. You know, whether the board goes better or anything, I just need to change something. Like give me mm. something to change, you know. And uh, that's kind of all it was. I was like, okay, you know, this is the change I'm going to make and this is, and we'll see how it goes. And, um, and you know, it's funny, you know, Felipe is getting interviewed here. Um, you know, well, he yeah, so I, I want, real quick, I, I wanted to bring this up, right? Because there's a couple of things here. You and Felipe had a few clashes um, before yep. this year in terms of, uh, there was a year where he had all the interferences and just kept mm -hmm. running into each other. He, so, he was sort of your competitive nemesis at the time. He was Sharp Eye's kind of number one guy. A yep. couple of questions. How, how, how does a Sharp Eye end up in your garage? Because I think a lot of people are like, oh, well, like, I thought you were like this shaper guy. Like, how does yep. that end up in your garage? And it's a pretty big leap, right? Because, you know, as you said, you'd ridden for Al Merrick for pretty much your whole career. And then you actually make the decision to be like, this board's going in the board back. Um, it's a big deal. You know, oh man, there's so much went into it. Um, and you know, Chad Wells, um, the team manager of Quicksilver, 
at the time he just got in contact with Marcio at Sharp Eyes and said, hey, you know, he, and Chad was like, hey, you want to just try something different? And I was kind of like, oh, honestly, not really. Like, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm pretty good with where I am. I'm pretty happy I qualified and that. Hmm. And, uh, and bang, all of a sudden, the, like next minute, that board was in my, in my garage. <laughs> it was just really weird. Like, <laughs> he just, he kind of just, yeah, Wellesley, Wellesley kind of just like put it there, like, you know, like just ordered this board without asking me. I think he paid for them too, actually, Wellesley. Shout out to Wellesley. Thanks for that. <laughs> um, he like paid for these, these boards and all of a sudden like they're there and I'm like, all right, you know, let's use them. That's kind of how it all started. And it mm-hmm. wasn't really like me reaching out and trying to find something else. It was just like Wellesley just kind of just put that board there and I was like, all right, cool, whatever. And um, yeah, yeah, the thing like about the whole Felipe thing, it was getting... You know, we had some good clashes. Um, and I think, you know, if you're a really good competitor, you have those heats and you look at that competitor that's really just bugging you and you just, you kind of like shake their hand and you give them respect, you give them props. Mm. That's kind of how I look at it. If someone's irritating me and someone's just on my nerves and getting on my nerves, it's like, wow, thanks. You know, that's like, I need that. I need that. Like, it's kind of that, like, that tool to sharpen your knife mm. and to get that kind of like, that just anger um and i feel like that kind of i was able to do that to do, do that to felipe a little bit he was just so pissed off at me but because he's such a good competitor he kind of looked at that and went like you know what thanks like that was you know i kind of needed that and i think the best competitors kind of have that switch to be able to look at something negative and turn it into a positive and then so when i started writing sharp eyes you know it was kind of like he looked at me instead of being like well what are you doing on like you know these are my boards it was right. kind of like, you know what? Like, all right, that's cool. That's cool. Let's, let's, let's battle it out, you know? And, and um, ever since then, I've kind of have, I have a really cool relationship with him, actually. You know, I have so much respect for him. And, um, and that kind of, uh, those little moments that we had, I think, shaped our relationship to how it is now. You know, we look at each other before he's now, and it's like, all right, game on, brother. Like, you know, but it's not, it's not one of those ones like, hey, man, good luck. Hey, good luck, bro. Like, you know, you're so awesome. It's more like, <laughs> Yeah, like I respect you. You respect me. Like uh, let's let's, let's show time. Let's put on a show for everyone. So it's kind of like we have a cool relationship. Do you think it ever crossed his mind to be like, yeah, it's great, ride sharp eye boards, and then he's on the phone to Marcia being like, make those a little heavier than mine, please. (laughs) To be honest with you, I I think I would probably think that of anybody else on tour, but (laughs) he's actually a a pretty true, like pure man. You know, you can see. You know, um, he's mature. He has kids. The way he treats his kids, the way he treats his wife, he's like a pure, honest, good human being. So I kind of really don't really see that. But I mean, maybe he did. But but, um, I'll never (laughs) know. Maybe he helped, right? But maybe it's it's interesting. It's interesting that Wellesley identified like even if it wasn't the sharp eye board, it's like we need to shake something up here. Um, Something that I think is lost on everybody is the speed and the level of performance difference between the QS and the CT. You know, I think you get a lot of super hyped guys on the QS sometimes, sometimes their sponsors hype them, sometimes whatever. They get to the CT and they're just getting their brains beaten in because the level is just so much better. Is that something that you found transitioning? I mean, you you know. A hundred percent. Yeah. I felt like, I felt like just a huge truck hit me in the face when I, when I rocked up the snapper. You know, I was like, I remember I had a heat with Jeremy Flores at Snapper in my rookie year. And I was like, I'm not getting scores. Like, what am I doing wrong? And then, yeah, at the time I didn't understand. But now I look back at it, I'm like, wow, I was a kid. Like, those turns are not real turns. So I think that's kind of what it is. The waves are different. The performances are different. Um, And saying that, waves are different. You know, J-Bay for me was like the wave where I could not understand Mm. My rookie year to J Bay, like I look back at the surfing I did there, it was so, it's so embarrassing. I can't even watch it anymore. And yeah. now all of a sudden, I think J Bay is one of my pet events. And you know, like these lines that Gabriel, the top guys make, um, they're they're just solid. They use the whole wave, and they just have so much control mm. over over the wave. Mm. And so and this is like me kind of trying to trying to harness that. I feel like this wave was probably one of the you know this wave really changed my career pathway, I think, you know, doing turns where I felt like I never would have done before and making lines that to me just felt fun. You know, I'm just like sinking the rail and I'm like, you know, I'm going to push as hard as I can. If my board slides out, it slides out. If it doesn't, I'm going to get a big score. You know, that was, that was probably one of my 
best at the time it was probably one of my best ways I've ever had on the tour on the CT event. Why do you think that was? Like, what were the what were the elements contributing to that jump in performance for you during this heat? Just having that wall in front of me, and it was like I felt like it was just a sign from just the surf gods or whatever, saying, "Hey, kid, like, let's see what you got. Like, we're gonna give you the platform. If you want to be a top ten surfer, this is where you're gonna have to perform. Everybody's watching you. The waves are pumping. This is where all your flaws are gonna be shown, and this is where all your." Um, pros are going to be shown at the same time. So you decide whether you want to be a little kid or you want to man up here. Yeah, and there's I think nowhere that's to hide where, at that spot. Yeah, for sure. at JB, there's nowhere to hide. And, it, you know, I think the best surfers um, kind of elevate there and the surfers that have their flaws get shown there. And you, met, you, you know, mentioned how challenging it was your rookie season um, and Griff's a rookie in 2018. And He's someone who is no question. He has so much talent, but you can kind of tell during this heat, he doesn't have the familiarity with the wave. He's kind of just all talent and and reacting as opposed to what it feels like you and Gabrielle are doing, which is like setting it up and, and being very proactive about how you're surfing the wave. Yeah, that's the thing. You know, when I was younger or when I was when I first got on tour, I was like, I just have to react to everything. You know, I'm just mm. I'm thinking too much. I'm I just got to react to what comes in front of me. But it's not really like that. You kind of just, you have to be really calculated. You know, when I caught this wave, I'm like, okay, this is a pretty much, you know, it has an eight written all over it. Mm. And I have to put, and I, you, I have to surf my way up to that eight or even go into a nine. And you have to calculate everything. It's not just about catching a wave and be like, oh yeah, let me just surf the best, best I can. And I think, you know, obviously Griffin's um, transformed and learned that very well, um, mm. as you can see now. But this is his rookie year and he's just trying to react to things and he's trying to just like make things happen and, and everything spontaneous. But it doesn't really work like that on tour. You know, you have to you have to know when to react, know when to s- strike and know when to hold back. And this he obviously um, me and me and Griffin have the same coaches, you know, snakes up on the up on the stairs there and. And, uh, you know, like I'm looking at him right now. Like I was looking at Snake and just, and I think he probably just gave me a thumbs up. Like, hey, that was a good one, brother. Um, and obviously going into this heat, it was like, you know, Gabriel was, you know, you know, obviously the favorite. And me and Griffin are working with Snake and, and uh, you know, me and Griff just look at each other and we're like, all right, you know, we're, we're, trying, to, we're, trying, to, we're trying to battle each other out. You know, Gabriel's probably going to, you know, do his thing. And, you know, for me, my heat was with, with Griffin, you know, top two advance and three gets eliminated. And, you know, I, I, you know, I just remember just clicking into that zone of like, you know what, like Griffin's like the same age as me. He has so much hype on him. He, you know, he, he had a crazy start to the year. Yeah, you got third at, on the Gold Coast. At like on the Gold Coast. Kira. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, obviously, like, yeah, if, if you say like, yeah, I was so stoked for him, whatever, like you're completely lying. You know, I was <laughs> pissed. I was like, you know, like I'm on my second or third year on tour and I'm having, I'm getting smoked and he's on his first year and it's like, it's like a walk in the park. Like he's, it feels like he's barely breaking a sweat and he's like, and everything's just falling into place. And yeah, because he's so talented and he's so good and he's just so good at what he does so that it was happening that way. And I was just forcing everything and it just wasn't working. And that, yeah, that was one of the reasons that pissed me off too. And this heat was that, was that moment where it was like, all right, Gabriel's got two eights. Like, you know, like you better, you better, you know, me and Griffin just looked at each other and we're like, all right, okay, it's game on between us. And I was like, man, I need to show the world that I can be that surfer. You know, I, I can be that surfer. And, you know, Gabriel's fourth in the world. It's, you know, I'm like, I don't even know where I'm at. I'm like, You're 23rd, in survival I looked mode. it up, 23rd heading into this one. Yeah, I'm falling off tour, you know, and... Uh, and so, yeah, this, this was a huge, huge event for me. Um, I remember my first, my first round heat, I had Italo and Kelly, and I won that heat. You know, a heat against Italo and Kelly. And I, I, and I said in a post interview, I said, you know what? My goal is to be in the top 10. You know, there's going to be a thousand people laughing at me uh, for saying this because, yeah, you're in 23rd. Like, you should be just trying, trying to stay on tour. But instead, this kid's trying to trying to say he's me in the top ten. I was like, okay, I said a lot of things. I better back it up now. And yeah, right here. So that last wave was an eight three seven. I'm like, okay, I'm in a I'm in a good spot now. And there's a wave coming up. This wave right here. This wave, I think, was one of the most special waves I've ever had on the tour, even until now. You know, I had like second or third priority. No one even looked at this wave, and it was like not even that good of a wave. But I'm like, okay, I have to put hundred and twenty percent into this wave. 
And I just remember pushing so hard at every single turn. And then right here, I'm like, okay, I'm kind of pumping a lot. I better start getting my, get mm -hmm. like a little bit more flow in between my turns. And so look mm -hmm. at in between here, I'm not pumping at all. Right. Everything is just like flowing. And I'm like, all right, okay, my flow's good. I have some power, some speed, and mm -hmm. then some innovation. You know, and I, I remember, remember that punctuation at the end of that wave just blew people away because, as you said, you're pushing on every turn. This wave is so exhausting, pacing such a huge thing, especially on a day like today. People aren't really loosing the fins. And, yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm glad you called that wave because I do think, you know, looking back at where your career is at today, it was like transformative for you in a lot of ways. Yeah, it was like that last every verse was like that moment. I felt like there's 10 minutes in between that the turn before that air and to, to doing that air. It was like that moment of like, all right, this is where you become a man. Like, are you gonna are you gonna, you know, put your balls on the line and 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 do that air and go up into that nine range? Or are you just gonna be safe and be that that typical kid that's scared to fall and and not go for that air? And it was like that moment for me was like, yeah, I'm gonna put it all on the line. I'm sick of getting the best, you know, the putting a, an epic wave together and finishing off soft and and just like a kid, mm. you know. And I'm like, I'm gonna, you know, stamp my authority authority on this wave. And so every little phase, there was three different phases to that wave. You know, the first part was like me, just like you know, trying to be aggressive and putting throwing everything at this wave. I'm just throwing that layback. I'm putting so much into this carve, and then everything's kind of janky and I'm pumping all over the place. And this was like the setup. And I'm like, okay, you know what? I got to clean things up. And then this part was like the, the part where I put all the turns in and everything's flowing, everything's smooth and I'm doing big turns. And then this was that moment of like, all right, are you a man or are you a kid? And I just threw this in. And I, and as soon as I landed it, I'm like, yeah, do you guys see that? Like I just became a man in front of you guys' eyes. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's interesting because Griffin got a really good wave too. And as you said, he's so talented I, I, just as a viewer, it does look like there are different approaches. Like Griffin is reacting to his wave. He's surfing it amazingly, but you're being more aggressive. And I think part of that is, is all that experience you'd had up until this point at that spot. And as you said, all those other elements driving you being ranked 23rd, being like, I'm not losing this heat with an eight, three, seven. I am going to, I'm going to step up and, and make this quantum leap into, into this next phase of my career. It's really cool. Yeah, like I feel like all those years leading up to 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 that moment, all the things I've learned went into that wave or kind of into this heat, really, and into that wave. It was like that moment of like, all right, you know, enough, enough learning, enough note, notes and everything. This is where you have to shine now. Like it's that's enough. Like put it into action, you know, um, stop being a student and become a, a leader. Mm. And that's kind of. That mentality that the mentality that I switched into, I feel like. And um, you know, that's why I said that this heat kind of changed my life forever because, you know, it was where all those things that I I've um kind of took notes of finally being propelled into a heat. Um and you know, seeing Griffin finish his wave right after me, I was like, wow, it's really, really on now. You know, it's it was it was really exciting for me. There's so many things going on in that heat. You know, it was kind of that that pride of, um, you know, to like being able to go to dinner and look at Snake and be like, and have Snake give that like that check of like, oh, yeah, you were the better student today, you know, between me and Griffin. I, and then there's also that thing of like, in, okay. go ahead, go ahead. No, no, no. I was going to say, I'm, I'm always interested in the world's best surfers and their relationships to their coaches, right? Because, you know, for years, the standard was like Kelly and Belly. And it's like, what do you tell Kelly Slater to do, you know, but it's interesting. There's so much value that the belly provided Kelly over those years, but it seems like all the relationships are different. Like when did you start working with snake and, and what is it in that dynamic between, as you said, like teacher student for you that, that you find beneficial? You know, I started working with snake when I was around. So when I was around like, you know, that age of 13, 14, 15, um, you know, my best friend, you know, my, it's still now my best friend is Leo and uh, and he was working with Snake at the time. And, uh, you know, I was kind of always there. I was always serving with Leo. And then, like, the first year on, on the QS, Leo had this crazy year, on, uh, year, almost qualified at 16. And then, you know, Snake was like, hey, you know what? Like, I can, I can get you on tour. If you, if you, just let me, just let me know. And I was like, wait, what? 
I was like, all right, like, sure, fine, whatever. Yeah, and, and when I was around 16, 17, that's when my relationship with Snake started. And, um, you know, the relationship I have with Snake is more like big brother and little brother than, than coach and student, you know. Um, you know, we have our own language. You know, we have our own way of um, just interacting with each other. Each other, You know, like I, I consider Snake like one of my best friends. Like, you know, it's like, it sounds so weird to say, you know, it's, it's just to call your coach one of your best friends and to call him, you know, such a big age difference. Obviously, he's gone through so much more in life. He's married. He has kids. He's retired. He's done it all. And to call him, you know, I consider him, you know, one of the people that I can really open up to and talk to and, and, um, and trust, you know, it's, I feel like that's why our relationship on tour is so good is because, you know, we can, we know how to switch on and off, you know, when it's contest day, he's like, all right, you know, you know, it's let's buckle in now. And when it's, a, and when it's an off day, we go golf together. We, you know, we mess around we, you know, we, you know, we go look for waves and it's kind of like all of a sudden he's not my coach anymore. He's like my, he's my brother. And then, and to have that switch, I think is so refreshing. You know, I trust, and you kind of gain that trust and, and with coaches, you need trust. You know, I remember this, he, um, he told me at the start of the heat, there was Gabriel and, and uh, Griffin, uh, went up to the like bone yards and were hassling for, for inside position and everything. And he said, Kanoa, go down the point and start, start the heat from, um, like from, from just wider than them and give them inside position. Let them, uh, you know, battle it out. And like, that's, that seems like such a little thing, but you have to trust your coach's opinion. And if it wasn't for that, maybe the heat would have been completely different. You know, if I did, if I would have started the heat further up, but those little things that I trust, he can tell me to surf switch the whole heat and I'll probably, I'll probably do it. Cause that's how much I trust him. Maybe you know? he was just trying to split you and Griff up so you didn't get in a tangle. He's like, Griffin, go yeah. up the point and hassle the shit out of Gabrielle and just keep you guys apart just for <laughs> the start of the heat anyway. Exactly. It could have been anything. There could have been so many things that went on in his head before making that decision. But if he tells me something, I'm going to trust that, you know, and I'm going to follow, follow that. And so, you know, having, um, you know, having someone like that in my corner um, definitely helps. And, you know, I remember... You know, him, he was texting me before this event. He said, you know what, Kanoa, it's time to buckle in. Don't, what, don't you think? And I was like, yeah, I think it's about time. And he was like, uh, Snake told me, he was like, you know what, if, if you put your mind to it, you can do it. And that little phrase stuck with me. And I was like, if I put my mind to it, I can really do it. My goal for this event was to make quarters. And, uh, and obviously, this is the heat right here. This is the, that heat to, to get into to, to my goal. And at the time, you know, I was having so many bad results. Quarters felt, felt so out of reach. And all of a sudden, here I am. You know, I'm in, I'm in first and I'm 11 minutes away from kind of obtaining that goal for this event and to kind of leapfrog me into that top 10, obje- uh, top 10 goal. It's fun. We're doing those um, the vault shows on WorldSurfLeague.com every Monday, like the highlight yeah. shows from like the the mid oddies or the early oddies. And Snake features very heavily in a lot <laughs> of them. Sure. And, and it's fun watching them with like crew at the WSL who maybe weren't around then or weren't watching and and kind of educating them on these different characters. And like Snake is was such a gnarly competitor. You know, he had Relentless. all the tools and he had a lot of talent. And he just he scalped a lot of major major hitters back in his day. Yeah, he, he, you know, the thing that he tells me and Griffin all the time is that, like, uh, one, of the, one of his little phrases that he says, phrases is, um, you know, hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. And he said he beat Andy multiple times. He beat Kelly multiple times. But he said, like, obviously those guys are way better than me. But he said he just outworked them. He said he, he trained so hard to a point where, he looked, him, looked at himself in the mirror and said, no one works harder than me. And when you have that mentality going into a heat, you, it's, you, you just feel like you can't be beat. And if you have confidence like that, reeking confidence, it's a lot of things you know, go your way. And that's what I've learned. There's a bit of a lull here at the back end of the heat. And you can see the, the shark patrol kind of congregating out the back there. Um, you know, obviously 2015 was the, the infamous year where Mick was attacked in the final. Um, we get shark delays there almost every year. Is that something that you're thinking about 
when you're competing out there is especially sort of during lulls are you are you want are you worried about it or is it on your mind or are you just trying to stay focused on the heat oh man it's it's so funny i hear people say like yo you were so worried about the sharks and whatever but it's like no none of us are even thinking about sharks when we're in the heat you know we're so focused on the task at hand and i think it's not just that i think we have so much trust in the wsl mm-hmm. um to protect protect us that they got it to a point where they have it so dialed in that they're not going to let anything harm us, you know? And so all we have to focus on is our heat. Right. And so I, I get in, I get into the water and that's the last thing I'm thinking about is, is a shark. You know, I just trust that the water patrol's there. I trust that they're going to, um, you know, protect us. Yeah, if a shark comes, the heat goes on hold, whatever. We'll go in and that's, that's you know, we're on hold. But yeah, like, you know, having that trust is so good to have an organization like WSL, making sure that we're safe. And all you have to worry, worry about is, um, is, uh, is, is surfing. And so I think that's why we're able to surf our best. It, you know, that's, you know, when I'm free surfing, I'm, I'm definitely thinking about sharks. I was going to ask. Okay? <laughs> and, um, have you ever seen one out there when you're free surfing? This day, this exact day, I, it, the waves were so good. I think I was like one of the last heats of the day, to be honest. Um, actually, I think I am the last heat of the day. Um, anyways, I remember going in, uh, and, uh, we had me and snake were, you know, going over the heat, we had some food and we said like, Hey, let's just go for an afternoon surf. And then again, that same instance, me and snake are just going for a surf, like, you know, like, like as if we're brothers, you know, we're like, Hey, let's just go for a little surf evening session. We paddled out and it waves are pumping. It was as good as it gets. And I mean, you can't see it here because it's a huge lull, but it actually ended up pulsing this afternoon. I swear. Um, and it was like, it got dark and people were out so late, so late. And I was like one of the last ones out because I couldn't catch a wave in because it was so crowded. And it was me and like four other guys out. And they're like, bro, did you see that? I was like, oh God, here we go. No. <laughs> and it's just this, and it's just like this wake coming. That I, we like see a wake and I'm like, oh no, like what is that? I don't even want to know. And then, yeah, there are enough, like you see this like object going through and you see just the tip of the fin going through and we're like, I know exactly what that is. And that was like one of the closest encounters I've ever had. And I, I mean, I mean, it's one of those things where I went straight in and I was like, you know what? They're there. We're in their home. They are in their territory. Let them be, you know, he was, he was cruising and that was, that was it. But it was funny that you asked me that question because it was literally pretty much three hours after this heat. It, it's a funny thing. I'm, I'm glad you brought up how you feel about during the heats. Um, and I'm glad that you feel good and confident in being able to perform at the highest level. But I remember when the Mick thing happened and the response was amazing at that time too. And then a lot of the measures that we put into place after that um, have probably provided confidence for a lot of surfers. But I remember having conversations at the time and I said, it'd be like playing like defensive back on an NFL field and having to compete at the highest level. And then, oh yeah, there might be a tiger that's like stalking the (laughs) field as well that you just, you got to keep in the back of your mind. Like, it's beyond being just scared for your life. It's also like, how do you focus on performing at such a high level with that being a concern as well? And um, it's interesting to hear your perspective on that in a big way. Man, it's so funny. Um, you know, surfing is such a unique sport. We have so many things that, that, are, that are going on at the same time. But, you know, you can, I mean, there's a huge role in this heat now. But the thing is that I learned a lot about this heat too, is that Gabriel had two eights before, like, I, you know, before I even, like, got started in the heat. Mm. And I was like, that's a world champion right there. He is, like, he was pretty much on third gear the whole heat. He was cruising, mm. you know? Like, there was not one moment in the heat where he thought he was going to lose because he started the heat with two eights. It's pretty much, it's so hard to lose when you have two eights to start the heat. And so he's already thinking about his quarterfinal heat against whoever, you know, who who knows who it is. But... And, um, and here, me and Griffin are like just pretty much stressing the whole heat, trying to battle it out. And that was the difference, you know, like he's saving energy where mm. we're, we're, you know, putting so much into this. Um, and, uh, you know, I had my waves and whatever. I, you know, pretty, I pretty much just surfed as, as good as I could possibly can. And I'm in the lead at the time, uh, a lead in the lead at this point. Griffin needs an eight. Um, and, you know, I just remember looking the looking at Griffin's face, and he was like, you know, all over the place like a shark, just trying to find a wave, and and looking at everything that came in. And Gabriel's Gabriel's like, you know, he has priority, and he was just looking at him like, you can go wherever you want. I'm going to be right here, 
you know, and that really showed, it was funny to see that moment of like, this is a world champion and this is a rookie, you know, not taking any credit away from Griffin, no way. But it was like, yeah, you can see the confidence that um, Gabriel had over a rookie. And, you know, me, like you can see, like I'm that little blob, I'm, I'm like super wide and Gabriel's down in the down in the point, so and Griffin's way up top. So as soon as Griffin, as soon as Griffin gets away, Gabriel was gonna go. Yeah. And and it was just one of those things where there's so much control in Gabriel's hand. You know, at this point, I'm just like, oh, this is sick. It's such a fun heat. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like yeah. I have 18 points. Like, you know, I want another wave to go in. Um, and then there's another little battle going in here. And so, you know, Griffin's going on this wave. And I remember looking at Gabriel going, like. He didn't waste priority on that wave because Griffin didn't make him use priority. Right. You know, there's there's little things to watch that people at home don't see. It's chess. You know, at the end of the day, it's chess. Right there, Gabriel could have used priority and Griffin would have had three minutes and 45 seconds to get the seven and win the heat and, and pass the heat. Um, but Gabriel just, you know, held his cards and said, you know what? No, I'm not going to let you have that three minutes. I'm going to stalk you. And I'm, gonna, I'm not going to let you have one chance to, to pass this heat, heat. So, yeah, it's um, there's a lot that goes into each heat. Well, there's levels to it, I think, is what you've been talking about, too. You know, And that's come up in a lot of really interesting ways in conversations, whether it's with Mick Fanning or John John Florence. And I always find it interesting because it feels like the greatest surfers you know, in the world, there's a level of humility to them when they qualify, you know, where there's a lot of people that get hyped and think that they're complete surfers when they qualify. And as you said, it's like, it's so much harder at the CT level. And I remember Mick said something really impressive to me. He goes, I didn't feel like I was physically or ability wise or psychologically ready to win a world title for like six years on tour. And he was probably one of the most hyped guys ever when he qualified, you know, and John very similar, you know, and and I think kind of what you're getting at here is that, like Gabrielle had been advancing through those stages. He was like a different species on tour at this point compared to someone like Griffin or even compared to someone like yourself, because yeah, as you said, this heat was like you advancing to a new level just psychologically. Exactly. Um, and that's the thing, you know, um, you know, competing at the highest level, there's so many moments where you doubt yourself and there's so many moments of highs and lows and heat wins and losses. And obviously there's way more losses, um, yeah, I feel like you spend your whole year pretty much doubting yourself. And so as soon as you can find that click and that inner peace of like, you know what? I, I deserve to be here. I deserve to win. And if I, didn't, if I don't win this day, the other, the other person just outsurfed me. But tomorrow I'm going to come back and I'm going to be better than that person. You know, it's a really simple um, equation uh, that you just have to get over. And I feel like that's where I got to at my, in, in my career at this point is that you know, each heat to me, it weighs less. You know, I remember like when I, at this time, like each heat to me, every heat that I lost was like the end of the world. And I've learned that each heat is a way to boost your confidence and boost your, your kind of, um, your inner kind of style, you know, if that makes sense. Um, and yeah, you know, like being on tour, like I can say that I've been on tour for so long, even though this is like my fourth or fifth year. Um, but I'm not, you know, Kelly's on what? How many years is Kelly on tour? Like a hundred years? <laughs> like, you know, it's like, he's got, no matter how many years I'm on, I'm on tour, he's going to have more experience than me. And so to kind of like, <laughs> you kind of have to go into these heats going like, this guy has way more experience than me, but I'm going to swallow that and I'm going to outsmart him in, in other ways. So, I think um, I think Gabriel's the master at that. You know, he knows that he's one of the younger guys on tour, but he knows that the the, the little amount of years that he had on tour were enough to catapult him to the experience that the other surfers have. If that makes sense, and I kind of want to get to that level too. Totally, and and as you said, this performance in particular was was transformative for you. You went on to finish this event third which was your best result of that season. You'd finished third before. You actually finished runner-up at the Pipe Masters, your rookie season. Um, and we talked about what was working for you, all these elements. But I mean, the finals, actually. In the finals, yes, thanks, excuse me. Yeah. It, it's, a huge, uh, it's a huge accomplishment moving from 23rd before the halfway mark to you finished the year 10th um, in a lot of ways. Um, yeah, I mean, 
it's it was different. You know, you know, all the results that I had my rookie year, you know, I, I don't want to say they're flukes, but they're, that was just me just having fun and it was just all coming together. I was like, oh, this is so fun. Tour is awesome. You know, and, and those weren't real results to me. Uh, and now this event, you know, coming into like my sophomore year, I don't know what year this was, but this was like, this is where the results will, will really come, you know, from the, the fruits of my, of my, uh, of my training and the, the work that I've put in. So this, that's why this event meant so much to me is because this was like where my real professional career started, if that makes sense. Totally. And, and I mean, from finishing 10th in 2018, you finished sixth last season, 2019, including collecting your first CT win in Bali. Can you talk a little bit about, I, I feel like there's jumps in your career, right? This was one of them. Probably winning that first CT in Bali was another one. Yeah, of course. And, you know, um, this was that moment. This he was that moment where, you know, it was that big jump and it was that big moment. And then I can say that Kramas was that next one. You know, um, you know, we could be talking about this in, you know, in a couple of years or whatever and say and look at look at Karamas and be like, yeah, this was a huge moment of my career. You know, that moment in Karamas this year, I'll it'll never I'll never be the same after that. You know, and it's um, all of a sudden I went from like, OK, yeah, you know, I'm stoked to be on tour. Oh, no, it was like, oh, he's a QS surfer. Oh, he's on tour. Like he's just, you know, he's lucky to be there to, oh, yeah, you know, top 10. That was kind of a fluke. Oh, yeah, he serves pretty good at J-Bay. He's all right, but he's pretty weak. And then to, the, to like, okay, wow, he won Karamas. Like, you know, he's a world title contender all of a sudden. So for me, it was like, you know, I'm kind of just trying to feel everything out. I'm trying to just understand and digest everything. And then when Karamas happened, it was like, okay, I'm really on this tour and to be here and not just be here, but to compete for a world title. And so... This seat, J-Bay, was that moment where I was like, okay, you know, I'm a top 10 surfer. I'm, I've consul I'm consolidated it. And then Kramas was like, okay, I'm a world title surfer. So, you know, at this point, I guess, you know, it's, um, it's continuing that path and, and, um, and looking myself in the mirror as a world title contender instead of a QS surfer. Do you like that? Well, if so, subscribe over there and then watch more videos over there. And then tell us your favorite videos down there. It's a three-step process. Do them all now.